Hi, before we know how to balance chemical reactions, we should know how to state law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass states that, in any change, physical or chemical, the mass is neither created nor destroyed. Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the individual questions. And good luck. Or in other words, atoms cannot be created or destroyed during any change. Like, imagine that we have a chemical reaction between A and B to produce C and D. If we start with 100 grams reactants A and B, we should end up with 100 grams also from the products, which are C and D. So is it possible for sodium to react with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and lithium chloride? No, it's not possible, since here sodium was destroyed or disappeared and lithium was created and this is not matching with the law of conservation of mass as I told you atoms cannot be created nor destroyed so always make sure that atoms on both sides of a chemical reaction should be the same and here comes our lesson how to balance the number of atoms on both sides of a chemical reaction like in this formula reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce water and liquid state on the left side we have two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen while on the right side we have two atoms of hydrogen and one oxygen atom only so the hydrogen atoms are balanced while oxygens are not how to balance the number of oxygen atoms on both sides you may simply think that we can just change the subscript that little number at the right lower corner of the atom but this is not possible since if we change that subscript, we are changing the whole substance since here H2O2, it's peroxide and it's not water. So we cannot balance the atoms by simply changing the subscripts. The only way to balance the atoms is by multiplying them by a coefficient. Like here, I multiplied the water molecule on the right side by 2 and this 2 is going to be multiplied by the number of hydrogen atoms and also by the number of oxygen atoms. So by doing this, you are having four hydrogen atoms on the right side and two oxygen atoms on the right side. By doing this, we change the number of hydrogen atoms. So we can simply balance the hydrogen atoms on the left side by multiplying it by two. And now, as you can see, on the left side, we have four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. On the right side, we have also four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. And by doing this, the equation is balanced. So we simply balance the number of atoms on both sides by multiplying them with coefficients. Let's have another example, the reaction of calcium solid with liquid water to produce calcium hydroxide aqueous with hydrogen gas. My advice for you is when you start balancing, start with the atoms that are found only once on the reactant side and once on the product side. Like here, hydrogen is found on two substances on the right side so it's better not to start with balancing the hydrogen atoms. We have one calcium atom on both sides, so it's balanced. We have two oxygen atoms on the right side, while we have only one on the left side. So to balance that, we have to multiply the water molecule on the left side by two. And now we check the number of hydrogen atoms on both sides. We have four on both sides, so there is no need to multiply with more coefficients. So on the left side, we have one calcium atom, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. On the right side, we have also one calcium, four hydrogen, and two oxygen atoms. So the formula reaction here is balanced. Another example, the burning of methane with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Here, since oxygen is found in two substances on the right side, we avoid starting with oxygen. We have one carbon to the left, one carbon to the right. We have four hydrogens to the left and two to the right. So multiply the water molecules by two. And now we count the number of oxygen atoms. We have four oxygen atoms on the right side. So multiply the oxygen molecules on the left side by two. And then the equation is going to be balanced. Stay tuned since we're going to talk about odd even technique and how to deal with polyatomic ions. Odd even technique is one of the techniques that can be used to balance chemical reactions. It's simply when you have the number of a certain atom is odd on one of the sides and even on the other side, we multiply the odd side by 2 
to make them both even and then we continue balancing like in this chemical reaction the number of chlorine atoms to the left side is even while in the right side the number is odd we have three and two total five so multiply the odd by two to make it even and then we continue balancing here since we multiplied by two we balance the iron atoms by multiplying the left side by two now we have four sulfur atoms to the left so we multiply disulfur dichloride on the right side by two to balance the number of sulfur atoms and finally we balance the number of chlorine atoms on the right side in the first compound we have six chlorine atoms and the second compound we have four chlorine atoms so we have a total of 10 chlorine atoms to the right side on the left side we have only two so multiply by five and then the chemical reaction is going to be balanced let's do another example the reaction of aluminum oxide with carbon to produce aluminum plus carbon dioxide by the way i will keep some links in the description that would help you to differentiate between ionic and covalent compounds and how to name them as you can see here the number of oxygen atoms to the left is odd while the number of oxygen atoms to the right is even so multiply the left side by two and then we balance the aluminum atoms by multiplying the right side by four on the left side we have six oxygen atoms so multiply the carbon dioxide on the right side by three to balance the oxygen atoms and finally we balance the carbon atoms by multiplying the carbon atoms on the left side by three and now the reaction is balanced is it possible to balance chemical reactions without using the odd even technique? Let's see. Let's try to balance burning of heptene, C7H14 with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. We have seven carbon atoms on the left. We multiply carbon dioxide by seven. We have 14 hydrogen atoms to the left. We multiply water by seven. And now we have 14 oxygen atoms in the first compound and 7 in the second compound. So a total of 21 oxygen atoms on the right side. While on the left side you have 2 oxygen atoms. If you want to use the odd even technique we should multiply the 21 by 2. But here we are going to multiply the oxygen atoms by a fraction. 21 over 2. Since as we learned in math when you multiply 21 over 2 by 2. We are going to simplify the numerator with the denominator and the answer is going to be 21. And finally to eliminate that fraction we multiply the whole equation by 2. Then the balanced formula is going to be 2C7H14, 21 oxygen, 14 carbon dioxide, 14 water molecules. One thing to mention before we start with another example is that if you use the odd even technique you are going to have the same answer. Let's try to balance the reaction of ammonia with oxygen to produce nitrogen oxide and water. We have three hydrogen atoms to the left and two to the right. So I multiply the left side by two and then the right side by three. Then we have six on both sides. We balance the nitrogen atoms by multiplying it by two. And now on the right side we have two oxygen atoms in the first compound and three in the second compound. So we have a total of five atoms on the right side. On the left side we have two we can use the odd even technique or we can multiply by a fraction we're going to multiply the oxygen molecules by five over two and then to eliminate that fraction we're going to multiply the whole equation by two and then the final balanced equation is going to be four ammonia plus five oxygens to produce four nitrogen monoxide and six water molecules In the last part of our video we're going to talk about polyatomic ions keep in mind that always you can refer to the description below to find useful links if you want to know more about polyatomic ions let's have our first example the reaction of sodium with calcium nitrate to produce sodium nitrate and calcium here nitrate it's a polyatomic ion and we deal with it as if it's a unit so we have two units on the left side and one unit on the right side to balance the number of units we multiply the right side by 2 then we multiply sodium the left side by 2 to balance the sodium atoms and now let's check the number of atoms on both sides on the left side we have 2 sodium atoms 1 calcium 2 nitrogen and 6 oxygen atoms on the right side we have also 2 sodium 
one calcium, two nitrogen, and six oxygens. So the equation is balanced. Let's have another example about polyatomic ions, the reaction of magnesium with aluminum sulfate to give magnesium sulfate and aluminum. Here, sulfate is the polyatomic ion, and as I told you, we're going to deal with it as if it's a unit. So we have three units on the left side, while we have only one unit on the right side. So you multiply magnesium sulfate by three, and then we balance the magnesium atoms on the left side by multiplying it by three. Finally, we balance the aluminum atoms on the right side by multiplying it by two. And now the equation is balanced. And now you are ready to solve the end of video questions. Please, if you are not, repeat the video again. Otherwise, solve the questions, put your answer in the comments section. If you have any question that I didn't cover in the video, please share it with me in the comments section. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos. See you in other videos and good luck.